are back for part two, informational literacy, knowing good information from bad. And let's see, there we go. I need to get my pointer. And I think I will go with a laser pointer for now. And, uh, you know, uh, we're going to look for, ba you know, bad information and this is not going to be as straightforward as a, a lecture as part one, and it gets back to context uh, because, you know, I hope you're not assuming that I'm going to give you like a list of steps to identify bad information. That's not the case and that's not how it works. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be giving you examples of bad information, and again, context is important, background information, background context is important. You have to be aware of these things and make your own decisions about things. And things won't make sense unless you have the context. So what I'm going to talk about is three sources or three types of bad information and give you a couple examples. Pseudoscience, fake news, and conspiracy theories. Uh, and just to reiterate, kind of from the last lecture, good information, uh, it comes from a trusted source. Uh, this source is an authority. Uh, so, for example, it's a publisher, uh, publishing house that is well known, or it's a journal with a high impact factor that's well known. Uh, and when you check the way that it was developed, the methodology of it, uh, the methodology seems appropriate. That is, uh, the uh, journal article has a method section with methodology you understand, and since you understand it, you think it's okay. And so those are two ways to identify trusted sources or good information. And then whatever piece of information you have, you want to have it corroborated by at least two independent supporting sources, at least two. Uh, and just to you know, go over this again, you know, science. Science usually leads to good information. Uh, good in, uh, scientific information comes from uh, systematic studies where uh, they apply the same procedure to collect information from everybody. Uh, these studies are empirical uh, in that they are focused on collecting data. This data is public so that means that everybody can observe the data. It's not just my feelings are this or my perspective is this, but this data is public and we can all look at it, we could all hear it, we could all see it, we can all smell it. And also, uh, statements that you make in science are falsifiable. That is, they could be proven wrong if they are wrong. And all these things are basics of research methods Hopefully you run across in 3.30. And uh, just going to spend a second on this, uh, but maybe you could stop the uh, slideshow and look at it uh, more carefully. Uh, this is the hierarchy of scientific evidence. Not all scientific evidence is the same. Some evidence is much better than other evidence. And so a case report or uh, just a, a look at one uh, situation is not as good as a meta-analysis of hundreds of different st uh, empirical studies. Okay, so our first example to, to provide you some context, pseudoscience. Pseudo-fake, science, science. Uh, pseudoscience associates itself to legitimate science. It relies on anecdotal evidence, that is, examples but not data. It sidesteps disproof, that is uh, their theories are not falsifiable, and they usually take complex concepts and they present them very simply. Uh, and that is how people uh, doing fake science try to make people believe that they're doing real science. Uh, an example uh, autism and facilitated uh, communication. If you look at this web page uh, it describes what uh, facilitated communication is, and this looks like a very trending in autism, looks very professional, 
Well, of course, uh, these are hallmarks of uh, pseudoscience. Uh, they want to look like something professional. They want to look like something scientific. They want to use terms. Uh, the method uh, facilitate communication. Uh, but uh, they really don't have any evidence to back up what they're saying. Uh, if you're interested in what facilitated communication is, uh, Google it and uh, use some of the things I'm talking about to understand what it is. And, uh, well, here we go, PhDs, Benefits for Autism, boy, Institute on Communication and Exclusion, this is more of that website. Boy, this looks really uh, uh, scientific and formal and, you know, you know, uh, uh, you know scientific and really trustworthy. Okay, uh, but here we get the American Speech Language Hearing Association. Uh, this is a actual public organization or an organization for uh, speech and uh, language professionals. And here is their uh, position statement, uh, which basically saying that there's no evidence for facilitated communication. So who do you believe? You have one website that looks really good. Uh, that says facilitated communication is a great thing. Another one says that it doesn't work. Uh, who do you believe? Well, uh, you know, here's their uh, position statement. Uh, facilitated communication is discredited technique that should not be used. There's no scientific evidence of the validity of FC. Well, again, if you know that this is a real organization, maybe you could search for it. Uh, you know, go to Wikipedia and see what it says about it and other sources to build up your trustworthiness of ASHA, then you may want to believe what they're saying. Uh, or you may want to go to PsycInfo. And here we see one article that we find on PsycInfo, Hidden Communication Competence or communicative confidence, case study evidence using eye tracking and video analysis. And so this is a, a case study looking at uh, facilitated communication and uh, using technological equipment such as eye tracking uh, information. Uh, so again, I want to go back to this. It's a case study. So this is one of the weakest forms of scientific evidence. If we look at some other psych info uh, hits, uh, we have facilitated communication and uh, authorship, a systematic review. And again, that is one of the highest forms of information. Oops, wrong way. Uh, and uh, authorship and facilitated communication, an analysis of 11 cases. So here we are. Uh, this is a, some type of review. It's moving beyond just one study and looking at the results of several studies. So uh, just by looking at a couple things such as different websites, maybe checking out who these people are and doing a uh, psych info search very quickly, you'll start to get a sense that there's more evidence saying that uh, facilitated communication does not work than it does. And again, we're talking about comparing trustworthiness across different levels. Fake news, uh, rumors or fabricated falsehoods, that is lies, uh, presented as legitimate news sources. And uh, remember last August when the Amazon was burning? And that's the president of France there, and he's tweeted this photo of the Amazon burning. That's actually not. Uh, the Amazon burning. That's someplace in North America. Uh, but he saw it. He thought it was real, so he shared it. But that's still fake news. Uh, it's not correct. It's not right. He didn't probably didn't mean to lie to us, but it was a falsehood. Uh, and then, uh, if you remember from August of 2019, we saw this uh, image here of all the fires in South America. It makes us believe that, you know, like most of South America is burning. Uh, where did that come from? Is that the truth? Uh, is like most of the Amazon going up in smoke? Well, in this case, Google is your friend. Uh, Google keywords and try to find the original source of information. And about the uh, map of all the fires, 
Uh, I found the original source in about five minutes by Googling. Uh, it's uh, FIRMS, Fire Information Resource Management System by NASA. And what NASA does is they aim satellite infrared scanners at the Earth and each of the red dots is probably a fire or it's probably some type of new heat source. And while, remember, this image here made people freak out because they felt that like uh, fires were burning like crazy in the Amazon, well, look at Africa. Uh, so, uh, you know, nobody's talking about how Africa is burning. And uh, so, again, this may be sensationalization, but we really don't know. But this is just one example of... Uh, you know, looking at uh, other sources of information to get a better background about what these news stories are. You can also go to several fact-checking sites, uh, which uh, you know you know, go and do the work for you. Uh, but then again, you have to trust them. Uh, I list these because they're generally trustworthy. And then uh, we move on to conspiracy theories. Uh, this final set of examples are, you know, uh, when an explanation of an event or situation invokes a conspiracy by sinister and powerful actors. And I need to get some notes for this section. Not that. Don't. Ah, here's my notes. Okay, people often think that the conspiracy is politically motivated, and they go to the, the conspiracy theory when other explanations are more probable. Uh, and one major conspiracy theory is science denial. Uh, so take your pick. Uh, vaccines cause autism. That's a conspiracy theory. Uh, GMOs are unhealthy genetically modified organisms. That is corn uh, that is genetically modified is unhealthy because it's made by evil companies that manipulate genes. The earth is flat. That's very popular. UFOs are aliens and supplements that is like calcium or vitamin E are useful in maintaining your health. Uh, so each one of these denies the actual science on the matters. There's actual science available that discredits all of these ideas. But usually people will say, well, there's a lot of evidence, quote unquote, that vaccines do not cause autism, but that's from the big corporate companies, uh, and hopefully you can see my air quotes, uh, who are making billions of dollars on vaccines. And so that's the conspiracy there. The uh, big global international companies want to make billions of dollars selling useless vaccines that cause people to become autistic. Uh, but that really, you know, avoids any of the real information. And again, I'm listing these, and I'm not going to go into them, but again, context, uh, you know, you need to understand examples of these conspiracy theories and why they're wrong in order for you to, to really, uh, you know, uh, start to build out, you know, a, a, you know, a set of context you know, background understanding of things so you can evaluate things better. You can't just do it without knowing anything. You have to understand things. Uh, one, uh, you know, conspiracy theory that I am really frightened that a lot of York students are into is about vaccines. That is, vaccines cause autism. And so a lot of, uh, you know, of my students here at York who are parents are not getting their children vaccinated. Uh, and this is really scary. But let's take a look at this and provide a little back background. You can research it some more. Uh, most of this talk about uh, the conspiracy theory that, vac that vaccines cause autism come from an article by Andrew Wakefield that was published in 1997 in the British journal The Lancet. The Lancet is the top medical journal in Britain. So that does have, that's a very, very prestigious journal. Uh, so therefore, on that account, that should, you know, create a lot of trust. And what Wakefield said in the article was that the mumps, uh, rubella, and measles vaccine uh, increased autism. Uh, however, 
uh, the paper itself was discredited uh, due to procedural errors, uh, due to the undisclosed financial conflict of interest of Dr. Wakefield, and due to uh, ethical violations that Dr. Wakefield committed. And uh, the article had so many problems that the Lancet retracted the article. Uh, which is an extreme, which is a, an extreme measure by an, uh, you know, a journal, uh, but uh, that's how bad Wakefield lied, and Wakefield ended up losing his medicine license, his medical license, uh, because of that. Uh, you know, I can go on to more. That's why I have my, uh, uh, you know, notes here. Uh, but what happened was this was basically. Uh, a case study, this article by Wakefield, uh, there was only about, you know, what was it, 10, uh, you know, 10 or so, uh, you know, uh, subjects in the experiment, and also Wakefield handpicked the subject's data, so he didn't really do a legitimate uh, experiment, he basically cheated and only chose the data that would support his idea that, uh, you know, uh, vaccines cause autism. And the reason why he did this was he was being paid by a lawyer who was trying to sue a company, uh, and they were suing the company because the parents felt that their child had autism because of the vaccine. And so it would certainly really help this court case if a published study would come out saying that, you know, the MMR vaccine causes autism. And so, uh, you know, after this, uh, dozens and dozens of research studies that were good had been published, which found that there's no link between autism uh, and uh, vaccines. Uh, but nevertheless, the hypothesis was taken seriously. Uh, several major studies were conducted. None found a leak between any vaccine or the likelihood of developing autism. However, some, uh, you know, entertainment leaders picked this up and created a conspiracy theory around this, and people have stopped vaccinating their children. And, uh, you know, here we go, August 2019, uh, stage set for bi big measles outbreak in Texas with current vaccination rates. Uh, and indeed, we're getting measles outbreaks all over the country because of this bullshit. Uh, so that's one example of, uh, you know, uh, conspiracy theory. And if you think I'm wrong, great, but I'm not wrong. I would encourage you to do research and do good research and try to find the truth about this. And if you do, you'll find that I'm right. All right. So is that the end of this? Nope. Uh, people, you know, You'd have to say, you know, why do people believe in these conspiracy theories? Well, there's a lot of social psychological reasons why. And here's some of them. If you really want to know, excuse me, ask me in class or come by my office and ask me. And I'll explain what these are. But these are all terms that you'd recognize after taking, uh, you know, one of my classes. And uh, you could probably work out for yourself, I hope how, uh, you know, availability uh, would cause you to believe that, you know, vaccines cause autism, uh, but availability often leads to mistaken conclusions. Okay, so that's it. The big takeaway from this is you need context, and so, uh, you know, pay attention to what's going on, pay attention to things that really aren't the, the key or the target of the assignment, and learn as much as you can about what's going on. All right, I'll see you in class. Bye-bye.